welcome to So Crafty with Connie. I am Connie and today I'm going to show you how to make these kangaroo daytime bags for the animals in Australia who are suffering from the fires. They're um, like their mother, like a kangaroo mom's pouch and so you put the little baby in them or the joey uh, and it keeps them safe and warm um, till they can get better and there's a Facebook group or the uh, animal rescue craft guild and they're asking for people to make them and they have patterns and that kind of thing and so i will post a link to their patterns on the description at the bottom uh so that it'll be easy to find um and i made these two so far they're pretty easy uh, if you have any questions, just leave a comment or you can send me an email, flamingconnieg at gmail.com. And all right, let's get started. Okay, so now I have got the pattern pieces printed out and uh, they printed out or they also gave you instructions um, how to tape your pattern pieces together and it's it's pretty self-explanatory um, and so that is what I'm going to do now and they have them numbered um, and it's really easy pretty easy to follow so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start laying these pattern pieces out so there's one and if you can see the pattern pieces that they have outlined where you lay them. Uh, number one is on the um, far right, top right. So that's what I did here. And then I'm gonna take my pattern piece number two and I'm gonna lay it on top of the black line between C and D and match up the outer line right here. Um, now, you know, it's okay if it's not perfect uh, but you can kind of see through the white paper. You can see the black line um, on the bottom. Uh, so you can kind of, you know, match it up pretty easily. And I'm going to use some tape to tape them together. I like to use this uh, big clear packing tape. Um, I like it better than scotch tape because I feel like it, it holds it um, easier and more securely. So I'm just gonna take a little piece and I'm gonna tape it down. And then I'm gonna take another piece and tape the other side down just to, basically just to secure it. Okay, so I've got my pattern pieces one and two taped together. Now I'm gonna take the third pattern piece and where it says G and H, I'm going to match that up with the bottom page that also shows G and H and kind of line it up with the black line here on the outside. Um, you can still, like I can see this, this uh, outer line, black line on the bottom page. So I'm just gonna line that up and then I'm gonna take some more tape and I'm gonna tape it. Now, you can use scotch tape if you want it's your preference. I just like this big tape because, like I said, I feel like it's stronger. Now, I would not use like duct tape or masking tape or anything like that because obviously you can't see through it. Okay, so now I've got the first side already taped together. I'm going to move that over and then I'm going to do four, five, and six. And it looks like Okay, it looks like there's a mistake right here on their pattern piece. It says kangaroo day four. That should actually be day six pattern piece. Because um, four is right here. So, um, that's just an easy fix. I'll just get a pen and uh, scratch that out and write it down for me so I'll know in the future that that's actually six. And occasionally, you know, you may come across that kind of thing. Um, and if you know the person who's doing the pattern or what have you, then you can, you know, let them know that there's a mistake. However, I don't know this person, but, you know, I, I am a member of the group. And so I may just kind of mention it uh, on the group. So 
uh, other people won't get confused. But, I mean, again, it's pretty self-explanatory. Okay, so I got my four down first, and then I have my five pattern piece. And here's K, K, L, and L. And I'm going to match those lines up like so. Okay, I've matched my outer line up. And uh, the pages do not line up exactly. That's okay. You want to make sure that the line of the pattern matches up more than the, the printer pages. Because, you know, everybody's printers printer is different. So, you know, it may print out a little differently. So, yours may actually line up, but mine didn't. But um, it's okay because I wanted to make sure that I got the pattern piece lined up. Now... Now I've got pattern six, and I'm going to match it up with M and N here. I'm going to line that up, and then I'm going to make sure the outer line is lined up and the inner lines are lined up. Take me a little piece of tape, and then tape this down, and then I'm going to do the other side. And tape it down. All right, so I have got the first pattern pieces all taped together. Okay, now I have the pattern pieces for the front of the bag that I need to put together. Let's see if you can, if y'all can see that where it says front of the bag. And these are pattern pieces seven through twelve. And I have those right here. So it shows that seven is on the top right. So I'm gonna put seven up at the top right. Okay, and then here is pattern piece eight. I'm gonna match it up with the line C and D on pattern, pattern piece seven. And again, lining up the edges on the side and on the in, inner of the bag, not necessarily your paper pieces. And then I'm gonna tape that down and secure that. Okay, now I'm gonna attach piece nine to piece eight and I'm going to line up G and H. So I'm gonna match up those lines and then I have the line, outer line matched up and then the inner line matched up. And again, I would, the letters just show you the placement. So I would not make sure the let, letters are matched up on top of each other. You need to make sure that the lines of the pattern of the bag are matched up together. Okay, so that's seven through eight which is right here. There's seven, eight, and nine. I'm sorry, seven, eight, nine, seven through nine, not seven through eight, sorry. Okay, now I'm gonna do 10 through 12. And it's on the left-hand side. So I have 10 here. And then I have 11, and I'm gonna match up K, lines K and L. So there's my K and there's my L. And again, I can see the black line on the bottom. And so I'm matching that up. I'm gonna tape that down. And then the last piece is 12. And so I'm gonna match up M and N right here. Match up those lines and make sure the inner lines are matched up and the outer lines are matched up. And then I'm gonna tape that together. All right, and so now I have pattern pieces seven through 12 all lined up and taped together. Uh, and it's the same as the diagram that they, that they show you. Um, and this is the front of the bag. Okay, I wanted to show y'all a close-up of the pattern pieces that I um, taped together, just in case you couldn't see uh, the numbers. So here are the pattern pieces that I had, that I just got through ta taping together. So you can see kangaroo day three, two, and one, and you can kind of see where the tape is and where I kind of outlined 
or match the outline um, as I taped them together uh, all the way up. And then I followed this piece, this page right here, it tells you. So if you can kind of tell that um, it's the same. Uh, and so, so that's one through three that I have taped together. And then this is four through six that I taped together. And it matches the instructions that they sent me as far as taping the pieces together. So this is going to be the pattern for the rear of the bag. If you see at the top, it says that it's the rear of the bag. Now that we have our pattern pieces all taped together, and um, I taped them on the front, and I also need to tape them on the back just to make sure they uh, stay together on both sides. Now, after we get through taping them all together, we're gonna go ahead and cut the pattern pieces out. And what we're gonna do is we're going to cut along, cut out along the outer line. So you can use your scissors, you can use your rotary cutter, uh, whatever you feel comfortable with cutting these out. I like to use my rotary cutter, especially when there is a curve involved. So I cut out the back piece and now we're going to cut out the front piece and again we're just going to follow the black lines. I know some people don't like using a rotary cutter. Um, it's, it's just your preference. Like I said, I do like using a rotary cutter when I have a curve. To me, it's a little bit easier to maneuver. So we got this all cut out now along the black line. So now we have our two pattern pieces cut out. We have the front of the bag and the back of the bag and I have it taped front and back. Now we actually have two of each of these patterns, but what you can do is take just one and cut on the fold. Now this, since this is the front of the bag, I don't have that labeled. And so I want to make sure that I know which piece is which. So I'm going to write on these front of the bag and then back of bag. So I'll know for myself uh, which is which. Now initially they wanted you to cut both of these pieces out and then you sewed them together like this. That's why there's that double line there. But you don't really have to do that. You could just take one piece and cut it on the fold of the fabric. And so that's what I'm gonna do. It'll just, it kinda, it'll save an extra step. But again, it's your preference if you want to cut two separate pieces and then sew them together. If you did that, then you would just lay your fabric down flat, one layer, and you would cut one of this, and one of this, and then you would take the pieces that are cut out, lay them on top of each other, and then sew a half inch seam allowance. So, but again, if you want to eliminate that step, all you have to do is take your fabric, fold it in half, lay the edge of your pattern piece on the fold of your fabric. Now, my fabric is already ironed out. I like to do that before I cut any pieces because sometimes your fabric may be folded underneath double and you don't realize it. And then after you cut it out, it's got this weird shape that's sticking out. Um, 
But anyway, I went on ahead and I ironed my fabric and before I'm gonna cut out this piece. And I'm going to lay it on this black line. I'm gonna lay the fold, the pattern on the fold where this black line is because this was going to be sewn together anyway if you had cut them out separately. So you really don't need this. So I'm gonna lay this like here on the fold of my fabric. You can um, pin, not pin, it's up to you. I typically don't pin, I'll just hold it. And so I'm just going to go around and cut this out using my rotary cutter along the edge of the pattern piece. Again, the rotary cutter makes it easy to cut along the curves. Okay, so I've got that cut out. Sometimes I have some little pieces that do not want to let go. All right. So I'm gonna set my scraps aside. And I've got the front cut out. So it's going to look like this. So that's my front. And now I'm going to cut out the back. I also like to see, and so I'm just going to use this. Again, it's all ironed. I've ironed it already. And then I'm going to just lay my pattern piece again on the second black line. That's on the edge. It's on the fold also. Now, if you were, this fabric is not one-sided, one dimension. Um, so it's not going up and down. So it's kind of all over. So it doesn't really matter where I lay my pattern piece. I could lay it here. I could lay it here. It doesn't really matter. But if you did have a directional fabric going one way, then you would want to make sure that it is the direction is going this way to where the it's going up and down like this. Because this is the top of the bag. So you wouldn't want it to be upside down. So you'd want to make sure your direction was going this way, the top being up here and the bottom facing this way to the right. Okay, so now I've got this all lined up again. I'm not gonna pin it. I'm just gonna hold it and then slowly cut around the edge. If it's not precise, it's okay. It will still work. Okay. So, there is my back piece. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside. And now it says you need a strap piece. And the strap piece is 95 centimeters by 20 centimeters. I have converted that for you to inches. So... 95 centimeters is 37 and a half inches. 20 centimeters is 7.87 inches. However, I would round that up to eight inches. Okay, and that will work just fine. Now, so it has to be 37 inches long and eight inches wide. So let's see if I have this. I'd like to use the same fabric. So let's see if I have this. 37 inches wide. It doesn't look like I'm going to have enough to make 37 inches completely one continuously. So I want to use the same fabric. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew a seam, straight seam right here, half of an inch, just straight this way. This is how you compromise if you don't have enough fabric for something, it's so all there, there's always a fix. There's always something that you can do uh, to make it work. So that's what I'm fixing to do right now. So I went to my sewing machine and I sewed a half of inch, half of an inch seam along this fabric, so I can make my strap out of the same fabric and have enough to make it 37 inches long. 
Now, what I'll do is my cutting mat here is 35 inches, so I only need two and a half more inches. So I'm gonna put this at the edge right here, and then I'm gonna mark with my finger 37 inches are 35 inches, which is right here. So I've got 35 inches on my thumb marked. I'm gonna take it over here to the edge, put it at the one inch mark, and then I'm gonna count over two and a half more inches. So that'll be one, two, and then this is my two and a half inch mark right there. So now I'm going to take it and measure the eight inches. And an easy way to do that is to just fold it as small as you can. And then you need to allow for any un things that aren't measured up at the top that, that don't align. And so I'm gonna fold it over a couple of times and then I'm gonna put it on the edge. I'm gonna go a little bit over the edge since I have some mismatches up here. And then I'm going to take my scissors this is a little bit over eight inches, and then I'm gonna go down to my one inch mark, and I'm just gonna cut it straight across. And that is going to give me my eight inch width. That's just a little shortcut. Makes it easy to uh, measure widths. And then this, this, here's my black mark where it was 30 seven and a half inches. So I'm gonna fold it in a half, fold it in half, and I'm gonna line my markup with a line on my cutting mat. And then I'm just gonna take my scissors and line up with that same line and just cut it off. And so here is my strap. And my strap is 37 and a half inches wide, uh, long and eight inches long. I'm sorry. 37 and a half inches long, eight inches wide. My apologies. I just ironed my strap and I ironed that seam that I sewed to make it 37 inches, 37 and a half inches long. I ironed it open. And now we're going to fold this lengthwise and we are just going to run a stitch along the raw edges to sew it together and then we'll turn it right side out to make the strap so let's go sew that stitch now I've got my strap folded with right sides together and I'm gonna sew a seam right down the edge. I'm going to use a half inch seam allowance. You can pin it together while you sew or you could just hold it. I'm going to hold it and then just keep an eye on it as I sew it to just to make sure that it stays together. Now here we go. So to make it longer, opening, opening that seam up. Continue to sew and making sure that the edges match up. If you have trouble holding it together while you're sold it, that while you're sewing it, I would recommend um, pinning it. But okay, so I've made the seam all the way down, and now we're going to turn it inside out. I'm sorry, right side out, and just keep pushing it through. And this is pretty easy to do since it's pretty big. The strap is pretty wide. 
So I'm going to keep turning it till we get it all the way right sides out. Okay. Now, and then what I like to do is we're going to do a top stitch on each side of the strap just to kind of hold it down and make it a little more secure. And what I like to do is iron it before I do that. So I'm going to go ahead and iron it with the seam that I just sewed on the edge. And then I'm just going to hold it down like this and then just iron it all the way down. Okay. Now we're going to cut out our lining pieces. And I'm using flannel, this yellow flannel for my lining piece. Now in Australia, uh, they call it flannel wet. And I looked it up and it is the same as flannel. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and cut this out. Now I'm count cutting out two at the time because in case I want to make some more, well, I'll be making some more, but that way I'll just be able to use this other one that I've cut out. So what I've done is just folded the flannel in half, we'll fold it over, and so that gives me two at the same time to cut out. It also uh, saves time. So, now here is the front lining. This is my yellow flannel, and I've got two pieces. I'm only gonna need to use one right now for the bag that I just cut out of the yellow and blue flowers. Now we're going to cut out the rear of the bag, the same fabric, using the flannel. And again, I'm gonna cut two out at the same time. So I'm gonna fold this over one time, and then I'm gonna fold it again this way. That way it'll make it two. Cutting out two at a time. I'm going to take my pattern piece and lay it on the edge of the second black line right here. And I'm going to keep adjusting it to where I don't waste a lot of fabric down here. So I'm going to keep trying to pull it up until I'm not using that much. And then that way, a lot of fabric doesn't get wasted. And then you want to make sure you get all the edges in. I might be missing some, so I'm going to move it down some. Then I'm going to go ahead and cut out the rear of the fabric, I mean the rear of the bag. And I will also have two of these. I'm going to cut off all of my extra that I don't need. Throw it away. And then here is the rear of the bag. And I've got two of them. So I'm gonna take one and set one aside. Okay, now we're gonna use a straight stitch and we're going to use a half of an inch seam allowance. And we're just gonna sew all the way around the edge of the liner piece of the bag. Now make sure you stop every now and then and make sure that your edges are together lined up. Now I'm going to check both sides and just make sure that I did catch all of it and I did so. I sewed the 
lining piece together. Now we're going to sew the outer piece together. Again, using a half inch seam allowance. Check and make sure I've caught all the way around and it looks like I did. Now I'm going to take my pins out and we are going to turn this right side out. Now you can clip the corners if you want or the edges. You know where the where it's uh, rounded uh, that would help lay it flat um, I, I, I made one earlier and I didn't do this and it was still fine I mean it you know it uh, did okay it didn't have the, the seam blunt uh, laid down okay but um, just to make sure that they lay down flat you can cut these clip them you don't have to do a lot you can just do it several a few on the corner so all right now i'm going to take the pins out of the lining part this one we are not going to turn right side out but the outer you are so we're just going to flip this out now i'm going to push out the seams like this Make sure it makes a nice curve. Okay, so I got that all. And so now, looks like this. So that is the outer bag. I love these colors. Okay, now let's go ahead and pin our strap to our lining first. We are going to open this up to where the seam is on the outside and we're going to take it and I would don't I would not put it up all the way to the corner because you're going to use a half of inch seam allowance right here. So I would just kind of leave a little room. Okay? Just I don't know, maybe about three fourths of an inch or so. Just kind of eyeball it. I'm pretty good about eyeballing. If if you're not that good at all eyeballing, then just um, get your tape measure out and you can measure it. And then you're gonna pin it. You're gonna match up the edges and you're gonna pin it in place. And then you're gonna make sure that it's not twisted. It's all flat. And then you're going to do the other the other side. You're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And again, I'm only going to use, I'm only going to put like, I don't know, three, four, seven inch or so out. And then I'm going to pin this in place like that. And then to the lining, we're going to take our outer bag fabric and we are going to push it inside the lining. And then you're going to match up the edges. And then we're going to pin that, pin that together. Now I do recommend pinning this, pinning this, to be easier uh, to control and hold. And then make sure the bra edges match up. And then I'm just gonna pin that here. And then I'm gonna pin the edge too. So a little bit more secure and then you're gonna go all the way around and you're going to pin the other side making sure that the edges match up and I'm gonna take this pin out 
and pin that together, secure it. I'm going to pin the edge too to secure it as well. All right, now you're just going to kind of push that in and you're going to line up all the edges and pin all that. Now, if you find that one is bigger than the other, then what I would do is just pull it a little bit more further down the edge. And then when you uh, sew it, you can just easily cut that seam allowance off. So that's not going to be a problem. Okay, so I've got that edge matched up. And then you're going to do the inner edge. And make sure this is all matched up too. And again, I would recommend pinning this part. And just kind of make sure your raw edges match up. This one's going to be a little bit further, but that's okay. Match up all your raw edges. And pin in place. Do the same here. And now what we're going to do, since we've got it all pinned in place, we're going to sew all the way around the round edge. And then we're going to sew the top edge as well. We're just going to sew all the way around it using a half inch seam allowance. When you, on the back of the, on the back of the fabric, on the back of the bag, you're going to leave an opening so you can turn it right side out when you get through sewing it all together. So that's what I'm doing now. I've left my opening. I'm going to sew over these seams. I'm going to open the seams up and sew. Okay, now I'm going to go around and make sure that I have caught all the pieces, all the fabric. I see that I'm a little short here, so I'm going to go back down and catch it a little more. Okay, now we've got it all sewn around the edges. Now we're going to turn it right side out. I am going to go ahead and cut the corners off just so it's not so bulky in the corners after you turn it right side out. Go ahead and turn it right side out. Here's the strap. You're going to push the lining back in. 
like this. And I'm going to get a little tool here. This is actually just one of those, um, what are those called? The skewers um, for sushi. One of those, one of those little sticks. I'm just gonna push the corners out so they'll be nice and neat. Okay, so that's done. I'm gonna push the lining inside the bag like this. And now we're going to top stitch along the top and that will close up your opening here where you turned it right side out. And we're gonna top stitch all the way around. Okay. Now at this point, you can iron it if you want. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but I'm going to just kind of leave it as is and just kind of maneuver it to make sure that the lining is inside the bag as I sew it. So let's go ahead and do that now. And for this, I'm just using the edge of my presser foot as a guide. Quarter. Now I'm going to turn it and sew around the curve for the front of the back. We're just top stitching all the way around. And then when I get to where I started, I'm going to turn it again and backstitch a couple of stitches to secure it. And then I'm going to cut off any loose threads. Just to kind of make it nice and neat. cut off all the loose threads and that's it now you have a kangaroo day bag for them to help with the injured an animals over in Australia and this is this is the first one that I did so it's very easy if you have any questions please comment or you can email me and I will have links to the patterns um, on the description and uh, let me know if you have any other questions and I will be putting up another tutorial for the uh, pouch, Joey pouches. Thank you so much for watching.